JD in the Duffel Bag podcast, myself, Chucky Online. Let me tell you something right now, yeah? If you've, like, watched me or been listening to me have conversations about art history, every once in a while you'll hear me mention this young lady's name. Miss Banks, what are going on, my brethren? Not much, my day is still. Yeah? You good? <laughs> I'm good, how are you? I'm all right, you know. Uh, like, there's a few things that I want to talk to you about first, yeah? But there's one thing I just want to get out of the way. Yes, because I feel like this is important. I feel like this is very important. Okay. Have you done the bus it down challenge yet? No, I haven't done no, it. No, you need to do <laughs> one of them. I was, actually, I did one in Dubai, but it, it didn't go down how I thought it went down. So <laughs> I have to retake. But the pressure's real. Like, people tweet me every day. I'm like, bro. That's you. It's you. you got to give a slice of that. I might do one. I was thinking about today. I've I've been at home a lot and I haven't been like getting doled up and stuff, but I come out today for you, so. Yeah, I hear that. Maybe and I love today that. when I get home, if you see my bust it down challenge with the same hair, you know what's good. Track right. Me, maybe do it. 100%. And you know what it is, yeah? <laughs> like when I was watching some of them, I was saying to myself, right, there's some phenomenal ones out there. And I'm like, yeah, nah, Miss Banks needs to get one of these in. <laughs> she needs to show what the knee game and all of that. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> No, it's true. I love women, though, you know. Like, don't, it's things like that that make me... Because I know, like, some people would have said before, you know, like, they like, ah, oh, the makeup thing and all of this type of stuff. Yeah. I'm like, nah. You see, when a woman is doled up, like, yeah. when they make that effort, there's something sensational about that for me. Period. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. How are you, anyway? It's important. I'm good, man. I'm good. I'm just getting back into the swing of things again. Really? Yeah, I feel like it's been weird, lockdown and trying to work and doing what you can but massively yeah I've, I've got high hopes for 2021 is it yeah? yeah how did you like spend your time in 2020 like because no one no it's so weird girl. no one could have expected the year to end up being how it was in it no. and as an artist that's like obviously it would have affected everyone massively you would have had your own plans all of these these things that you were thinking that you were going to do like, how did you end up spending your time at home, uh, trying to write, yeah. trying to just keep the inspiration up because I obviously weren't really living um, and planning my shoots. Like I was planning my shoots, I was trying to shoot from like as early as as March, like when we first went into lockdown and it just couldn't happen. Right. Um, and then I ended up bringing out my first thing of the year, Novikov. Yeah, August, yeah, 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 yeah. I was just planning towards that really. I had I had a lot of plans for 2020 and I had a lot of music I wanted to get out. And unfortunately I, I, I struggled, but yeah, I just spent a lot of time planning. What, like, what do you mean my struggle? Like, what type of It's hard to get video shoots done. Yeah. Like, you can't have a certain amount of people in a room, uh, yeah. social distancing. Like, I and do these times you got, like, the makeup, yeah, yeah like, I, exactly. you know what I'm saying, like, the eyebrow lady. Camera crew alone's about 10, man. Right. Then you got your team and extras, and it, it was just hard to attain. It was hard to pull off, really. Yeah, mm. it was mad. So things that I could have usually done quicker was just really hard. What about like the the creative side of the writing though? Because yeah. I feel like naturally you would have to, it's better when you're living life, isn't it? You yeah. know, like when things are happening and stuff and you're experiencing things or whatever. Yeah. And then like wh whether you're conscious of it or not or, or, if it's, or if it's a subconscious thing, you're experiencing stuff and it's going into the bars and whatnot. Now, you're just in your yard. There's not really much happening. Yeah. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? Like It's funny. I made a lot of like... I don't know if I could swear, but I made a lot mm. of like harder music in that time because mm. I feel like I had a lot of time to be at home and reflect. And I feel like maybe I was even bugging more than I usually do. Like things are <laughs> up. I was thinking, bro, like <laughs> what the, I can't even make my happy turn up music because I'm not in the dance. I can't go to I'm the club. I'm vexed. I got, exactly. So I was just in that bag. I was just greasing it up, whatever, whatever. But it worked. I liked it. And yeah. I'm, I'm, glad I, I'm glad I did that because I feel like, you know, having success with a certain sound, I started finding other things easier. So Facts. to go back to the rap drawing board was good for me. I enjoyed are you, it. Are you, are you good on your own? And what I mean by that is, you see, like, just being in your own space now and having to just chill out. Literally, yeah. just having to just chill out on your ones, innit? Naturally, you might have had a couple of people around, sister, yeah. all that type of stuff, whatnot, yeah? But now, being having that, that time to actually just slow down and not do nothing, yeah. are you good on your own? I'm good in my own space, really good. I'm... I've been living by myself for a long time, since I was about 17. Oh, for I'm, real? I'm 26 now, yeah. Oh, man. So I'm used to my own space. And I enjoy it, like, even more so. Even when people come around, sometimes I'm like, yeah, I'm ready to chill by myself again yeah, yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, 100%. I'm one of them ones. And everyone knows me, I'm a bit finicky. I like the house clean. Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm the same, you know. Like, I, 
I, can, I feel like I can only tolerate the people in doses. Yeah. And then after that, yeah, you come and check me in that. But yeah, all right, now you need yeah. to, you understand what I'm saying? You can yeah. go home now. I need to have my own little space. Mm. I might even, if I've got people around or whatever, yeah, and it's noisy and there's hella vibes in that, I definitely need two days at a bare minimum <laughs> to just kind of. Yeah, chill off. Yeah, literally just park off. Yeah, I'm um, a bit like that. You know what I want to do, yeah? I want to get to know you a little bit because yes. I feel like I've spent a lot of time watching you. Yeah. But I actually don't know. And we've seen each other a couple of times on a, yo, like, let's yeah. have a conversation or whatever. And when this came up, I said, you know what? Nah, let me use this time to actually get to know you a little bit yeah. and understand you. And I want to go back to, um, there was something you said in the bar where you said, um, um, good heart, bad child. Yeah. yeah. Right. I want to go back to like, <laughs> let's go around 14 years old, Campbell yeah. world you grew up in it yeah Wolf Road right talk mm-hmm. to me. what what was going on around you around that time um who are you in school in and out of school bunking, oh, bunking. on the block yeah I lived with my dad around them times for a while I was in and out like my mum and my dad's like my dad's um so they, they, they were they weren't together they no were, not together oh, cool. um Brandon Estate I got more family as well in Wolf Road. Like I have people in other parts, like other sites. But yeah, Brandon Estate. Basically, yeah, just on the block, bare man them um, in school sometimes. I'm not gonna promote bunking. Yeah, because I ain't gonna good. promote bunking. Yeah, I did the bunking thing in it. <laughs> but I'm gonna be honest with you because I was just talking to, some, to someone about this the other day. Yeah, I remember one time like I was with my brethren and that I was bunking in the subway. Yeah, and like it took ages for an hour to go past. Yeah. ages for two hours to go after a while I said yo I'm going back to school bro <laughs> like you know like it was so bo- there was nothing to do yeah. but see for you yeah like was there was there a few of you that was on that and literally just away from school just chilling yeah sometimes a lot of the time when I did bunk I was in school right I was in, a lot of time when I did bunk a random age as well I was actually in school I just didn't go lessons I was barely like out of school I probably started doing that when I got older but yeah it was it was dead one time I remember I was bunking in, I don't know what that park is in Peckham, like it's a bit, like you're going, like after Peckham Rye, it's a massive park. Yeah. It's like near that girl school, I don't know what it's called. And we got caught by these, um, they're not real feds. <laughs> they're like, do you know, they're, they're not real feds, but basically they end, us, they end up taking us back to school. That's what happened. And I just thought, this is dead. But yeah, a lot of time I bunked in school. I wasn't really outside. But did, then after school, I'd be on the block and yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah did your parents know? Like, no. So imagine this year. Oh, my dad, if he sees this. But basically, my dad used to be a train driver, so he would start underground. So he would wake up to go to work at about four in the morning. Right. So my dad is gone. So it's up to me to actually get to school. But I wouldn't go to school till like. 11. 11. Yeah, I hear that. Lunchtime. <laughs> like, what the hell? But what was I... F- I don't even know you why. You like, up late in that. I was doing the matting yeah. and I was not getting caught. Like, But actually, tell like, my dad knew that I was a bit mad. So sometimes it would just boy me like, yeah, I'm not going to give you a little school money, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, you're boying it, bro. Like, I have to use the little... The free dinners and that's it. Can't get a little chicken and So what, you bunk now nah, and then go to school <laughs> for the dinner? Yeah. For the <laughs> little lunch and that yeah, and then bounce again. Up, basically... <laughs> Yeah, it was bad. It was bad. Yeah. What ma- like, like what made it that though? Like what made what? Because I think when I go back to the time when I was when I bunked, yeah. Yeah. Like my brethren, I remember they came from a certain household and all of that, yeah, and they were just my brethren or whatnot. But like, they were getting into certain things, and then I just was naturally getting into those things as well. But I think yeah. for me, I kind of got to a point where it was like, no, nah, actually, no, this, this is kind enough. of yeah, this is a bit. You understand what I'm saying? Like, what sort of took you there? I'm not sure, it's a few things. I guess probably the friends I had around me. Mm. When I first went to school, I was really smart. Like, I was, like, coming from my primary school, I had good grades for someone. I don't remember what you do before you go to second school. You're sats or something. Sats, yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. was really smart, I was good. My only main issue that you say is I, I used to talk in class. And that was, that, fine, year seven, I used to go year eight, but my school was a bad, my school wasn't the greatest school at the time. Right. I, like, I went Kings though when it was a foundation school. Like, they, every, anyone and everyone used to go there. If you didn't get into school, you go to Kings though. Do you get me? Oh, one of them ones. So, maybe the friends I was around and like, m- my parents were quite strict. Like, they raised me right. And my dad never used to have it. Like, at first, like, if I come home late, even like a little bit, like, it would be on to me. Right. But I think it even, it made me want to rebel more. 
and I just wanted to do me and I was using school as a time to just have fun rather than learn. Right. And I always just felt like, oh, I'm smart. Like, I get it. Like, this is light work. When I did go to lesson, the odd few times, I felt like I got it. It wasn't too hard for me. And I just felt like all I have to do is just remember stuff from my test. Like, it didn't, it, it sounds mad. I was mad cocky about it, but I think that made it easy for me to do the dumb the dumb stuff I was doing because I just felt like, well, I've got this in the bag. When I do go lesson, you, yeah, I understand patterned. what they're telling me. Yeah, it's yeah. not like it's, I'm mad struggling in school, yeah. but then I didn't progress over time yeah, 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 due to all of that. So it was a weird one, but I think just the friends around me and just, just using it as a time to have fun. I don't know what it was. I just, some lessons didn't interest me. I wasn't interested in science and I don't know. Was you stuff. always on the music thing though? Was I always, always loved music. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. Even when I left school, like, I always wanted to do something that was more practical. I went into musical theatre and then I realised it's actually a lot more theatre than music. Right. But basically, yeah, I wanted to do more music and it just, it wasn't that. I realised it was a lot more like performing arts, more acting. Yeah, more yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. I didn't really want to be an actress. So, yeah. You're just more, you're, you're more specific in music. that. When you know what you want, yeah. you're more specific in that as yeah. opposed to like, I need to do this and that and all of these other things. Like, if this is what you want to do, you kind of just want to do that as opposed yeah, to wasting your time was. and doing other stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I hear that. And I, and I had to grow up really quickly because cause I gave my parents so much trouble and because I was rebelling so much, it made me have to move out right. faster. So I was already out my house by like 16 because they were tired. Like, And it's mad because when now we drop, you don't know, every time my mum and my dad's like, people ask them, what does she mean she was a bad child? And I'm like, they love me now, but they always yeah, love yeah, me. Yeah. But yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm the golden child now, like I'm good, but like... Obviously, they probably just don't want to even talk about it, but it, I was not. Now, do you know what though? Behaved. I'll be honest with you, yeah? yeah. I think it's like, see, now, I think it's sick to have them type of conversations with your parents, you know? Yeah. Like, now, I go and check my dad every Wednesday, yeah? Aww. And there's like certain things that were happening when we were young, yeah. and certain things that were going on in his life and that. Mm -hmm. And. When you're young, you see these things, but you don't you you don't deep it because it's yeah. just what that is, isn't it? Yeah. But now I'm at a stage where I'm, I sit down with him and I'm like, hold on one second, like when thing came to the like, what was going on? And then he would tell me the backstory on that. Yeah. But if I'm sit if I say to him, you know, like when I was doing this or I was doing that, like how did you feel about that? Yeah. And now we end up having some like interesting conversation because you don't you don't necessarily see their perspective because they don't tell you. You know what I mean? I've never actually really had that conversation. Mm. And I think I still should. But like, it's so mad because I feel like now I'm an adult and I see the stress I've caused my mum right. or my dad. I think that's what drives me to be even better now. And like everyone always is now is like, oh, you know, Tara's so nice. She's so cool. She's this, she's that. And I'm like, I feel like I'm that for a reason. I don't want to, I don't need to overcompensate for it, but I feel yeah. like there was a time when them not weren't proud of me. It was, it, my name was never in a, in a good conversation. If she didn't come home, she got arrested. She was this, she was that. So now it's like, I want to make them proud. And yeah. they did a good job. It's just, you know, I don't have kids, but I always talk, like, I talk to other parents and people always stress, oh, my child's doing this, they're doing that. And it's like, no matter what you do, yeah, at a certain age, your child becomes their own person. 100%. Do you get me? Even today, I was having a conversation with my brother, and like, she was pissed that like her sibling was doing something, and she's like, she don't get it. They're from a good home. I'm like, bro, it's not even about your parents at this point. Hundred percent. It's really them, and that's their character, and it's like, yeah. So it's it's a yeah. It's, you could, it's, do you know it is? You could be told all of these things that you could come from that, you know. <laughs> but see, when you go outside, yeah. Remember, they, a village raises a child, isn't it? That's so it's it. like, yeah, I get it. Come from a good background and stuff like that. But when I'm outside, I'm just with who I'm with, innit? Mm -hmm. And I relate to them and we catch a vibe and it just, and all of that is what that is. Yeah. But the, the reason why this is interesting to me is because traditionally I know that coming from an African household, <laughs> they are, they don't play when it comes to certain things. They don't okay. play when it comes to, um, when it comes to college, school and and a certain type of job or lifestyle that they want you to have yeah. and not necessarily like I'm generalizing here in it yeah but the, from conversations that I've had they haven't always been the most supportive when it comes to the creative stuff yeah. early on in it so like for you now finding yourself at such a well trying to find yourself at such yeah. a young age it's like almost it just doesn't even matter what they say in it you're just mm. going to do what you're going to do yeah. Uh, yeah and I started doing music early like 18 I started doing music. That's when I started really like getting on the circuit. I used to go open mics. Like I started right. using social media because yeah. I wasn't really into it. And my parents have always been supportive. Like no. my dad was a mad, my dad is a mad music lover. Same as my mum. 
like all my mum's sisters can sing and her brother right. her brother could rap like he's the one that showed me about rapping back in the day he used to listen to all drum and bass and x-man and skibbity right. and all these people yeah, yeah and then yeah. like my dad's brother was remedy from essential so like i grew up with music oh, around real? me yeah i grew up with music around me oh mad yeah. do you know anyway to be fair yeah i feel like we're now moving past the time where you know parents from a certain place are not may not be supportive of creative because as people get older they start having their children and you yeah. start remembering what it was like when you was young yeah. so naturally you're not going to start putting that on your own kids if they decide that they want to start being creative or they want to yeah. start doing certain things you get what i'm saying mm. but you said um you've been popping since bigger fish yeah, yeah. i said rah hold on one second bigger fish whatever <laughs> happened to bigger fish and what was you it. around it was you around for yeah, real them I, got, I got around like late size of bigger fish like when i talk right. to a certain amount of bigger fish they're thinking like 2010 or like yeah like when, bigger fish is like old school that do, like don't waste my time yeah. not like that but like w- i was on a circuit probably about like, 2015 probably when it was just not dying out but like more newer school age like it was me tion wayne nsg like mm. and we were shutting it down i didn't even have big tunes then but people were still working with me like yeah 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 i feel like there's not much under 18s like that at all anyway now no. who even knows now we've been a lot yeah exactly so long. That, all norm- of that's yeah normality. yeah ex- literally that all that's a thing of the past so anyway listen you moved out at like 17 yeah. 16 17 yeah did you have a plan did you know what you was gonna do i had no plan i was still in college highly anxious about my future very anxious why because i just felt like where am i going what am i doing i have this dream i don't know how i'm gonna start it i'm in college i i can't stand it i don't like it I'm barely what making any money. What was you doing in money. college? I was doing the uh, musical theatre. That's oh, yeah, what I was studying. Said, oh, right, cool. Performing arts. Yeah. So, and I was going to a good college at first. I was going to Richmond, then I got kicked out. I had to go to Lewisham. Oh, I didn't man. even last I went in Richmond. Richmond as well. So. I was definitely, remember Glades in that? Yeah. I was there for like three <laughs> months. I had done the mad thing and then I was, yeah. Serious? Yeah. No, talk about that. What do you mean? In uh, what sense? No, just, just a madness. <laughs> I had a little fight. Is in it, the yeah? sports field, yeah. And it was like, yeah, basically. Outside was you life, easy you know, to get along with? Like, see, back if in you day. if you didn't outside of your brethren, yeah, outside of your brethren, yeah, was you easy to get along with? No, I was cool. Well, I hope I I was cool. Maybe yeah. not in school, but by the time I got to college, and I was a bit more refined. Yeah, like I was right. cool, I, and I liked like the the good girls and the cool girls and people that had their head down. Like mm. I wanted to be more like them, but I was just a bit troubled. You yeah, get yeah, me? yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but yeah, I was I was calm. And even now when I meet people, they're like, oh, you're better now. So I'm like, well, I don't know, what you, what did you expect? Of course. Yeah, mm-hmm. but you get older, innit? And you, yeah. you, 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 your perspective on certain things change. That's natural. Like, yeah. if you if you are the same person now as you was when you was 16 years old, then there's a little bit Big of a... Big problem. There's a little bit of an issue in there somewhere. I guess I still got that inner child in me, but, you know, I just got to take care of it. Yeah, yeah. Like that's what, up. Yeah, that's where the bust it down challenge... You know <laughs> what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm done with you. <laughs> what was I saying? So, yeah, I was in college... But then, yeah, like I said, I started realising I didn't have a passion for musical theatre. Right. And then I remember I'd I done the second year. I changed college. I went more to the ends. I was in Lewisham, a bit more hoods. <laughs> and then I was about to do another year there. And then, like, I just I, I had an epiphany in less than one time. I just couldn't focus. And I was just like, the truth is, I don't like this. And I'm trying to fight it. And I can't fight it. Mm. I don't I don't like studying this. It's just not me. And I didn't like learning scripts. And then, like, if we done like a dumb play or something stupid, I didn't like my character. And then, even after you've done the play and performed it three times, you still remember the script. I just find it really weird. Yeah. I don't like it. Yeah, yeah. And I feel like a lot of actors, they, I might be wrong, but I feel like a lot of them lose their own sense of self 100%. because they have to constantly strip their self down to play another role another yeah, identity yeah. like you come to college you have to wear all black can't have colorful hair like these are the things i do to express myself right. my style my fashion i used to like have a, i had a moment when i went through like this grungy phase i had a septum piercing right. i used to wear like dms and leather jackets and Cold. dark lipstick like it just i just like to do me and it just i just felt like i was being restricted so I remember I just asked my teacher if I could leave one day and I just I just never went back. Did you speak to her about it properly? Did you have a, no. a, a conversation about it or no? No, but I made it clear I wasn't coming back. And then I went into like full-time work. I'm living by myself. Yeah. And I have to like 
keep the lights on and right. make sure everything's patterned. See and how I quick think, you got to grow up when you, as soon as you move out. Yeah, and I was forced up myself. I didn't need to move out. I just forced up myself because I wanted to do me and Miss Baven. And when I finally got my own space, I was like, "Wow, well, what is this about? This is nothing. <laughs> like, what? I come to little with a little zoo or something. Yeah, just yeah, yeah. chill off. Like, this yeah. is." I could, like I didn't need to leave my yard. Yeah, but you could have done it at home still, kinda. Not really, but not really. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, yeah. I could have just chilled off and just found a way to kind of just work with my mum. Mm. Do you get me? But um, yeah, and, and all that, all of that actually just led me to start doing music. I got, I got a few jobs. Was working for a few months. Lost one of my jobs, and my girl was just like, "Babe, look, you're getting older. Let's just go in the studio." I was only eighteen, but she was like, "Let's just go in the studio, see what you make." Right. And that's how it all started. I think, just thinking about this now, yeah. When you are a young artist, right, especially yeah. if you're still living at home, you got the comfortability of that support of just being being at home and not necessarily having mad bills and all that to pay. Yeah. yeah. But it co- becomes mad different when you move at a young age, there's bills to pay and all of that, then you want to start music. And the reality is, yeah, music don't just pay like that. Mm. Like, you don't just start music and music starts, the money just starts rolling in and stuff. Yeah. So you kind of got to juggle sometimes between, you know, Real life, yeah. You know, having a part-time job or whatever yeah. it may be, and then trying to work on the artist um, side of things. Is that what you were doing, or did you, in the end, just say, you know what, I'm gonna just leave this all together, and then just try to see if I could just make this work over here without doing that, without juggling it? I was still juggling it for a while. I took that big leap of faith, I would say, in about 2015. So, so I started in music like what, 20, 2013. Yeah. yeah, 2013. Yeah. Um, I took that leap of faith and started taking it really seriously Seriously, around 2015, where it's like, I ain't got no job and this is the only thing I'm doing and I need to find a way to make money from it. Mm. And that was one of the hardest things I had to do. I could imagine. Yeah, it was like, and even like, even though in and out of jobs, I was always like a hustler. I always found a little side something. Yeah, yeah, whatever. yeah. There was always a little but money. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. In the same breath, I just wanted to go proper, like legit and just get myself like straight and and just find a way and i remember when that happened i probably had like five bills in my account five bills how did you make that stretch though what you had to pay for studio and all that how i did it i don't remember how i did it right i don't like you know probably so traumatized that you've pushed it so far i hear that (laughs) i don't know how i did it bro and i i think the, the first time i started making money for music and getting help was like 2017 right working with prs and i got funding and all these stuff and that's when things started really changing for me but like in them two years i didn't really have things like that and i was just straight grafting work 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 was work. anyone teaching you the, was anyone giving you the codes was anyone no one saying was no me codes no one was giving me codes like uh, uh, no there was no one that i could really speak to mm. no um I think it's interesting when you look at the fact that, like, in general, yeah, it's difficult to cut through anyway. Hmm. It's difficult to cut through anyway, yeah. yeah. But as a young woman, yeah. it's even more difficult to cut yeah, through. Yeah, for sure. Did you comprehend that? I didn't think about it. I didn't. I don't think I even realised it. Hmm. I didn't over-deep it. If I did deep it, I probably would have taken a leap of faith. Really? Yeah. I don't think I, I, don't think I thought about it. I was just so determined to make it work, I just did. Even just being a young black woman, I didn't think about it, I just thought, yeah, mm. just do you, everything's gonna be all right. Yeah, yeah. Thank God I was positive about it, but. You have to be though. Yeah. You have to, otherwise, if you let that cloud of negativity dominate you, then yeah. then it's a myth for you. Yeah. You can't, you can't get drowned out in this game. I guess you gotta have like, you gotta have more than thick skin in this, you know? Cause the the, the highs are oh, mad. The, listen, the highs are mad high, but see them lows though? Yeah. Them lows are mental. <laughs> Talk on that. Music's a weird one. What do you mean like lows like in just in a journey? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think something that can be very frustrating is is trying to break through and have a moment and get the recognition you maybe feel you deserve. That could be harder sometimes, like. Before 2019, which I would say up until this point was probably the greatest year of my career. Right. Sometimes I was like, bro, like, what do I need to do to like get to that level? But you know what? The desire always grows. It never changes. Even after the things I've accomplished, I still want more. That's what I was going to say. What level? Because there's always a different level. So at the time, 
say for instance, my first thing was like, oh, I want to get a million views. Okay, then I get a million views, but then. it's with a feature. Okay, I want a million views by myself, my own song. Then? Then um, I want that streams, I want 10 million streams. Right. Uh, I want a chart. I want this amount of followers. It's a constant thing of growing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I had a buzz like this, but I want a buzz like that. <laughs> uh, you got the plane, Jane, and I want a bus down. Right. It's mad. I hear that. Yeah, do you get me? It's like, it's, 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 sometimes it's rapper problems, but it is what it is. There's always something more. But I think when things started fully changing for me and where I'm at now, it's like, in my mind, I'm lit regardless. Right. Like, I have to think, even though I ain't got these things yet, I'm already popping in my mind. I'm a star. I'm global. That's the type of things I'm saying to myself. It's like, boom. I don't care if this ain't happening yet. I know it's going to happen. I can't look at what it is. I have to just see what's coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, the lows are a bit more balanced out now. I don't feel like... I don't go through the emotions I used to go through. I have to just stay on the straight and narrow. Yeah, because yeah, if yeah. I get too caught up, everything's just going to fall hard. And it's going to fall like an upstream movement when it's, it's not that deep. I started doing music because I love it. Yeah. And I started doing music because I could express myself. Then I started realising it's bigger than me. Yeah. And there's people looking at me and they're getting inspiration or they're following the way I move. So yeah, now it's just like, I'm grateful that I can make money for what I love and there's more goals, but I just got to stay happy and know I am who I am. Keep That's the perspective, it. innit? Yeah. Was what was um, Once Upon a Grind your first thing? Yeah. That was your first thing, yeah? Mm -hmm. So... Like, what was going on around then, then? So you was, like, obviously in the studio in that, but that must have been that the time when you was really on the, in the field. Yes, and I was juggling. That was, like, just before I took that real leap of faith. Like, mm. I was still kind of working. Yeah, I was still kind of working. Because that was a lot. There was a lot of freestyles on that, innit? And I remember... I a lot of tracks, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I remember, like, I don't know who sent it to me, um, but I just remember hearing, and Kenny Allstar was hosting it, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, there's a version of him hosting it anyway. And I remember just hearing some of the stuff and I was like, right, who's that? Like, she's got like, I, I just heard something that was a bit different at the time. Yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? And a certain type of energy and some of the things that you were saying on there. But then it like, it just went <laughs> a bit quiet. And I was just like, all right, cool, whatnot. But then like, you know, the la the last year and a half that you've had, yeah, I went back and I was listening to, because I like to kind of go back to hear yeah. how certain things change or whatever. And I'm like, wow, oh, listen to the woman that she is, cause to the young, like, it's so you can see, You can tell the mad difference now. Like, at the time it sounded fire, fire. Now I listen back, I'm like, you as a baby, like. Right. I, di I didn't find my voice yet. Yeah, 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 yeah. But what was going on around them, them times though? Them time I was still juggling work. That was just before like I really went for it fully. Um, and then, like, just before I dropped the tape, like, I, I lost my job around them times. Mm. And I went working, and, and then I just said, you know what? Just just go straight for it. Like, yeah, yeah. Uh, just just go straight for it. Do what you got to do. Like, go go ham. Everything you've been making, get it out. Um, but I was hungry. Like, I was definitely hungry. Like, I, I wanted more. And I feel like even, even working the job I used to work, like, I used to work in retail, I was... I would talk to people there and I'm like, what do you want to do with your life? Like, what's the next step for you? And they'll be like, yeah, I just want to be a manager. I'm like, you want to be a manager? Okay. It's not a bad thing, no. but I actually have a dream that I really want to follow. I don't really know why I'm here. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. It don't make no sense. Like, and I stopped working because of something stupid. Like, it wasn't even like, because I went attending or like, I was there, but like, I wasn't there. I yeah, wasn't yeah. focused. Do you get your, me? Yeah, so, your commitment wasn't, wasn't exactly. to that. Yeah, yeah. So, I just started deep in like, bro, you really have a dream. You need to just push for it. And it's like, even that time when I said I started in 2013, I weren't really putting out music. Like, I started more really getting my feet in the ground, like, end of 2015, mm. 2016. We so, start yeah. seeing more freestyles from you, some yeah. more videos and whatnot. Yeah. Do you know what? Can I tell you something that I probably like about you, yeah? You see, like, when you do your freestyles and that, even, like, of recent, I remember <laughs> watching, I watched your, like, uh, let me just take one. Uh, uh, the pen game challenge. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone There's something the that you do, game. yeah, uh -huh. that is, I think, is just the coldest thing. <laughs> At the beginning, you haven't tapped in. Like, the song's playing or whatever, yeah, and you're like, yeah, I'm about to do it, and you start smiling, whatever. <laughs> then as soon as you're about to start barring, it's like you've, you've tapped in, and you're just in <laughs> some, on some complete next zone, the, the clarity and everything. Like... I don't know there's not a question on that but speak on that a little bit because I just feel like there's a whole different energy yeah, yeah so yeah do you understand what I'm saying 
just the expression, isn't it? Yeah. I just feel like, because on a day to day, like, apart from if I'm like affirming stuff, I'm not going to go around talking smack about because myself you or saying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't really talk in madness, but in my music, that's when I get to say how I feel, what I'm on, what it is. Yeah. And the pen game was so light to me, but everyone loved it. And people really love my energies in the freestyle. I want to try and put like more content in me actually uh, rapping live because that's yeah. my forte. Like, I know how to deliver face to face. That's why I miss show so much. Right. On stage, I, I know how to give it and really like articulate myself. I don't know what that is in it. It's just going from Tyra to just Banks. A million percent. And you see it. And you know what? Going just even the live shows here, and I think I said this before on my pod. See, sometimes. You can like you can listen to an artist and you can like an artist, yeah. yeah. But then when you go to the show, sometimes that can tell you whether you really, really like someone or whether you actually not really into them as much. And you had a headline show in London, I think it was in Hackney, I can't remember, I was with Manny. And I remember that's coming like Oslo. there. Oslo. Oslo, that's it. And I remember going it like like Manny said, oh, do you want to come? And I was like, yeah, do you know what? I want to see what she's about. Because mm. I want to, I'm hearing stuff, but I ain't gone to the show or whatnot. Yeah. I want to see if she could deliver that the same type of way. And then, like, I've come to the show, yeah. And when you've come out and you've you started spitting your bars and stuff like that, yeah, the way that you delivered the energy made me realize, oh no, hold on, she's actually the real deal. Like, <laughs> you're so clear in when you're delivering. Like, you the the way that you perform the music is, it's it's like it's. I feel I feel like it gives a lot more, or you show a lot more of yourself yeah. when you're when you're performing. That's true. It's sad. <laughs> Not sad, but as if people be like, yeah, man, when you freestyle, I'm like, bro, shut the, shut <laughs> up, bro. I'm tired of like, because sometimes as well, when I'm in the studio, I'm really laid back. But yeah, performing is my thing. I love it. I really do love it. And I think that's why my fans that really F with me, really F with me, because yeah. they know when they see me that I'm going to deliver. That's, that's guaranteed if I have to lose a wig if I have limb, to lose a if wig, I have to, uh, if break my, if I have to lose my voice, whatever it is, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. gonna give you everything. Whatever you spent to see me is gonna be worth your time. Like I know that for sure. Yeah, it's just about marrying and putting that energy and everything. But yeah, I, I love performing. And even really the marrying stuff, like I feel like you marry st- sounds and styles together really, really well. Yeah, like one of the one thing that I feel like people don't talk about when it comes to you enough is your versatility. I feel like yeah. you're very, very versatile. Like when we see, we see you barring and stuff like that, and we yeah. know that we know that energy. We know we know how thorough that, when where that comes yeah. from. But see, like when you're doing songs like again, there's a song that you got called again. Yeah. That's a vibe to me. Thank you. And I know it's very different, but people don't talk about your versatility enough. Mm. Being a versatile artist to you seems to be like something that's quite important to you. Right? Very important to me, and it comes to me naturally, like. I, I look at certain pop artists and I, and I love everything for them. Like, they can do whatever they want because it's popular culture. If they want to do rock one day, if they want to do reggae, if they want to do an African sound, if they want to do R&B, if they want to do, like, country. Like, when right. you listen to, like, Beyonce, Rihanna, whatever, they do what they like. Yeah, and yeah. And for me, as a, even though I'm a rapper, I'm an artist, and that's what I'm on. Like, the energy is not... Obviously, sometimes I can be more vulnerable. Sometimes I can be more hood, like, but... Show Banks that. is Banks. Yeah, that's, that's, that's that. me. Like, the same Banks on hood bitch is the same banks on snack the right. same banks on you don't know is the same banks on again yeah. that's just who i am i'm a normal girl like there's I just go, different layers exactly yeah. and, and that's something i always want to portray and i feel like people are going to see that further along in my journey and my fans are going to love both sides of me and i i love the melody stuff dearly like that's close to my heart i love singing i love the afro beats i, I like i love it so mm. I'm gonna keep doing it and mixing up and whatever and hopefully people see that you know now this girl's really versatile and it's not for me. It's like it's not even being a jack of all trades because like it's music, and I feel like I'm sick at all of it. So just yeah. explore that. I feel like that's dead though. Like mm. the the if you're if you're a music lover, yeah. yeah. As far as and I'm speaking for music lovers here actually. Yeah, when something bangs, it just bangs. Do you get me? There's been times where I've gone in Westfields, yeah, and I've just heard a rock tune or whatever, and I'm like, what is that? <laughs> There's hard. one tune called Shut Up and Dance. Yeah, I can't remember the name of the band. Listen, as soon as I heard that, I, I went straight this. to the whip. <laughs> straight to the whip. And I banged that all the way home. If something vibes, it just vibes, isn't it? And yeah. I feel like as an artist, yeah, if you can put yourself in a position where you go in and you just create, like, with no expectations, with no filters or no nothing, the be- some of the best stuff comes out in that. Honestly. You know what I'm saying? I think some of my, some of my biggest hits that I have in the vault 
they're different. Yeah, yeah. They're different. They're different from maybe what people expect from me. And I don't care. Because I'd be going to like it. Or you ain't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I feel like my fans get me. Like, they get me. And but I, me, I'm a music lover. I love everything. Pop, rock, soul, R&B, Afrobeats, reggae, dancehall. Like, you name it. Drill, grime, rap, hip-hop. Like, I love music. And even as a rapper, like... If I want to do a drill thing one day, I can do a drill thing. If I do a grime thing, I can do that. I can do like a, a hip hop beat or whatever. But like, I love everything. Don't yeah. get it twisted. Like, if I go and do something, I don't have to be that now. Like, but it's, and nowadays, everyone is more segregated. People only want to do like one sound or right. what works for them. I get it, but you know. Did you did you like see the more that you've progressed in this thing, yeah? Yeah. And the more that you sort of found yourself, maybe even through the music and stuff, yeah. Did you outgrow some of your brethren and that? yeah and I still feel like certain journeys that my life takes me on I'm like bro this is different fam you like mm. no one your bridges are not doing this like yeah and even like just simple things like I'm always trying new stuff trying to change my lifestyle like I've I've gone completely opposite from where I used to be like ain't that a beautiful thing it though? is because that's is. when you see when you look at that and you just look back, and it's recent because it's not even that far. Yeah, but that you far. look back here yeah, and you think, "Raw, like, yeah, I that did was, that. Yeah, that was I did that." You know? <laughs> but look, I'm, I'm here though. Yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? I survived it. Trust me, out here. I'll be telling my brothers about like stuff. I'll be like, "Yeah, I'm doing this diet now. I'm eating quinoa and chickpeas and and, and, yeah. and all these things." And even and olive. Like, yeah. But, but oh. I wasn't an olive done like that. <laughs> and then recently, now I started to. You understand what I'm saying? My brothers are like, "Okay, girl." Like a lot of them are rooting for me. Quinoa. Like my brothers, are rooting, yeah, they're rooting for me. But it's like, bro, like nah, I can't just now when they're inviting me to go have rice and chicken and mac and cheese and that. I can't do it. They're looking at me sideways. Now, like, don't... Right, hold on one second. Don't what? just dim the whole thing off, though. <laughs> you can't do that. Shayla! You can't just go you're over so, here and start eating aubergine so and right all these type of things and then no, all of, but, now you're not going to eat the... But what if I want to just do vegan, like, holistic life and these things? So what? Are you, what, have you, are you completely, like... Are no, you no, vegan no. Is? I'm only doing it for a little while. I'm doing... Basically, I'm doing it now for, like... Let's well, say, vegan, like, yeah? Yeah, we're trying oh, some it. things. Yeah, trying some things. Some how, things. how long are you in? Not long. Only what like a, a week and a bit. Oh, that's good still. <laughs> but do you know what? In general, I'm always doing different butter, stuff. You ain't had butter. No, no, no. No, I had butter. No cheese. Yeah, but can't you have like flour and that's not real butter? Yeah, I had no cheese. No, I've been good. I had no dairy, no meat. No, yeah, you've been watching I'm the chocolate, cost. yeah? I had no snacks. I'm, I want it. Right, no. I hear that. Still. I want it like, I'm trying to get me. Just, yeah. <laughs> but the next video and that, and let's make sure the skin's looking good. And nah, No, but seriously, like, still. thank you. No, but I feel like, Anyway, but separately from that, because my bridges are with me, but yeah, over my journey anyway, there's mm. people that didn't even have faith in my thing, mm. like acting, oh, how's your little rat thing going? Mm. Or like, you really think you can make it? Like, bro, just all of that needs to just be deaded. And I don't have them conversations with people, but they know who they are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you see where I'm going now. Yeah. And, and that, it's like... And now it's easier to be to be cool now yeah. when, when, you're at the, when you're starting to see something. Everyone wants to kind of be around now. Everyone like, wants to hang. Everyone yeah. wants to be backstage at the show now. Oh, always the lit shows or you're on this headline or you're touring with this person. Like, Let me pull up. Where was you? Yeah. You went with me in the studio. Yeah, yeah. You went with me when I was doing the little, when I was doing Glastonbury and 30 men there. Right. Early days, you wasn't there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, but yeah, it, you know what? I can't, I, I don't hold no malice against people because it took me a long time to realise that my dreams could be a reality too. I always knew that I wanted to do things, yeah. but like, over time I've become more sure of myself and it's like not everyone's gonna get it you're doing something that's creative it's not right. the norm and like yeah like they don't see much people make it from the hood whatever but I'm doing my thing did the man now. them embrace it so you yeah. like where you came from I've been out borrowing man them for years not sorry not even like that but from my hood yeah. I was the only girl that could rap and I could rap better than a lot of them and a lot of men that started with me don't take it seriously mm. and a lot of people are on my side. A lot of people back me. Like, they respect my team because luckily, I don't want to say, like, girls don't get caught up, but I feel like a lot of men that I grew up with, they had other things swaying them off. Are oh, they in the trap still? Right. They're doing this. Whereas I, at a young age, had a boyfriend when I was, like, 18, and he didn't even want me to be on the road. He's like, babe, go college. Yeah. Go get a legit job. Like, do you know, go do all this stuff. See, I was already kind of being pushed to do the right stuff. But there's a lot of men that they have the talent, but they're lost. And they're making money on the roads. So I don't even blame them. Mm. And they don't find their feet. Like, to, do you know what it but is, I yeah? put my all in. It's hard, like... 
it's hard to come away from that, you know. Yeah. Like Especially some people, some people say, yeah, some people talk on it as if to say, like, you know what? When you when you have when you're in that lifestyle, you just can get up one day and just walk away from it, and yeah. it, it just doesn't work like that. Yeah. When you've been in it for such a long time, or you've been, or that's your environment, or whatever it may be, yeah, it's very difficult to just turn around, tur- just turn around and say, you know what? From this day today, I'm just not doing it anymore. Yeah. There's all these different circumstances and scenarios that are around it that either pull you back in or keep you in. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. And especially when that's what everyone around you is doing, your brethren, yeah. your friends or whatever, you don't necessarily look at... It's, it's hard to see somebody who maybe come from the same block or it's rare to see someone that's come from the same block or the same ends that's like cut through that you could turn around and say oh yeah like I want to be uh, like if you did it I can do it Yeah. more time you might just see people from different ends that, that have cut through and done it but that's them that's not me yeah. do you know what I mean mm-hmm. alright Nobacop see that thing there yeah <laughs> <laughs> do you know I'm not going to take it there just yet oh, but what, what I will what? do what I will do is though yeah what I will say is is that like would you say that now people have become more accepting of women Talking being sec- yeah, sexually expressive now or nah? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. When I was coming up in the industry at early stages, first of all, I wasn't even like that. I wasn't even comfortable with myself. Like, I was young as well. So what, but you like, weren't talking though? You weren't like, you and your bridges not, and that? Uh, okay, I'm not going to lie. Oh, of course. I'm mad. Not even me and my bridges. Let's yeah, don't, not even let, talk man, about don't it. Don't do that. Let me not even gas on light on Right, myself. don't do that. Let me tell you, the first time I done an open mic, Yeah. I was talking mad. I was talking about sets from the jump. Right. My first thing was like... Um, do you remember the bar? That's what I'm trying to remember. Some... Uh, I was just saying some mad stuff of like... I was saying some mad stuff like, uh, now like, go, do go, do it. No, because I can't remember it from the jump. Just go in from where you remember. I said, my, uh, my eyes don't lie. I don't remember the buzz. My eyes don't lie. Muscle memory. Please believe me. Something like, I was saying something like, I pop it just like a wheelie. Read it like it's a banger. Like something that's on your playlist, I'm sure you, I'm highly rated. Mm. Arts the hit is updated. Chickens, they want my style, but I'm sure they know they can't take it. Mm. Often I'm imitated, they love to copy and paste it. Need to face it, even chicks want to taste it. Talking about my birthday like you don't know where the cake is. What? Candles on my back, you can wish me happy belated. Swag was always on point, but I'm sure you prefer me naked. Mm. I was talking mad. Mm. Look at you. Ooh, <laughs> I love Why it. Why do you like this? No, let me tell you, I, me I tell you saying, something. I, I love it. But I was going to say, I was never always like this, but that's yeah. the first bars I ever performed. And I was okay. talking smack. <laughs> like well, chicks want to no <laughs> shut up but um yeah I think they do they're more open to it now and that's good do you know what I thought for a minute I thought maybe not I thought maybe not but the good thing was you're just doing it anyway I don't do you get care. me right I don't care sometimes I think am I going to cringe when I get older and have kids and stuff but no you know what I think as well though I don't like it's always like when girls have kids you're a mother yeah, yeah. <laughs> to Jen, you're a mother did you see what you happened with um, Cardi where she like but I think so, rightfully so right. I think they're just moving mad you do not want your kid going around saying wet ass like yeah. no no yeah, so she don't even need to know the meaning you just it sounds wrong she doesn't need to be saying why, it. Why is that so hard to understand? I don't understand. No, that. people just want to be quick to judge and and get at people. But I think people should express themselves. Like we can't act perfect. Like even me. Like I feel like for years. Like I said, because of my 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 background and where I've come from, I've tried to just be. So I'm I'm a positive person, but. I try to be nice and treat everyone with love and be respectful, but bro, I'm not perfect. And if you violate me, you're gonna see a different side of me. Same mm. as artists, you we can't. We're not all gonna be conscious and sing hunky dory and not talk about our bodies. Some people wanna express their sexuality, and we're allowed to. Everyone's mad. Oh, my kids, you, you're letting my my kids should listen to it, but your kid can't. You just try and do what you can, but your kids are still gonna do what they wanna do. Man, but also, no one's telling you what you should have your kids listen to, though. Do you get what I'm saying? Like, if she, if someone's deciding that I don't want, like, I don't want, you know, my son or daughter or whatever listening yeah. to that, that's a choice that maybe that person or you or I have made, isn't it? That doesn't mean that um, you have to. Yeah. If you don't want it, you don't have to. There's no rules. 
It's mad. And they act like this stuff is new. It may have been more like low key, but even the other day I was watching bloody the LaBelle's singing. Right. They made that song Lady Marmalade. Right, yeah. The yeah. old school one, not not Pink oh, and, old, old, and Christina old Aguilera, the old school thing from the 70s. And they were singing, yeah. with the Afro. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Back in the, they were saying it. What do you want? For, they were talking about it. They were, and I'm sure there's a story about a prostitute or something like that. Yeah. Uh, like, I wonder what little Kim went through. This oh, you know what I'm so mad? I was asking my mum about this the other day. I was like, what were they like back in the day when Little Kim came out? How accepting of Little their... Kim's album, yeah. Have no, you it's war though. Hardcore. It's war. Oh my the it, interludes. From the intro. The interludes I'm are like, mess. Girl. <laughs> girl. <laughs> and, and you know what I listened to that? I remember I was listening to that when I was young. I don't know where I got it from or whatever. But do you know what? Honourable shout out to my mum. She never stopped me from listening to a thing. And do you know what? <laughs> listening to whatever type of music or whatnot never made me want to go... Like, if I listened to Little Kim's album, it never made me want to go and disrespect a woman. Yeah. That 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 wasn't the thing that made me want to do that. It never made me look at a, a girl and think, oh, you're just like her. Yeah. Even though the album was, you know, however old when it... I don't even know how I got that album. I think maybe it might have just been one of them things, you know? It was like porn, isn't it? Like... I yeah. need to listen to this. Listen to that. It's mad. You know, I'm definitely not against it. I'm with women being free. The only thing I find scary about certain things when it comes to women being so vocal sexually is just like being in the industry and being exploited because of that right. or what they've gone through. That I don't know what little Kim probably went through them ages being with Biggie. She was quite young or like just other artists. You hear loads of mad stories. Foxy Brown, like Foxy Brown. Yeah. yeah. A lot of them that's like was like that, even though they were just real and probably being themselves, they've they probably went through a lot. They probably went through a lot. Yeah, yeah. Not even just not even just from the outside looking in, people looking down on them and thinking, oh this is nasty. Just the industry and men and, and men even teaching them maybe that's what they need to say. Right. Have and grooming them in that sense. Have you felt that though on your come up? What men telling me that I need to be that way? Yeah, yeah. No, but I do feel like there's certain times when I felt like Maybe if I look better, I'm gonna get more of reception. Look Which better is, in what sense? Like, look, have myself more put together. What does that mean? Okay, look, so like, obviously, makeup hair I like doing anyway, but right. I feel like as you get bigger, you feel more of a pressure to look good. Yeah. And then also, obviously, to be like even sexy in a sense. Like, I don't have to show off my body to be sexy, but like in my mind, I still feel like okay, make sure you stay in shape, like, and do certain things. Like, there's mad talented people that like of all shapes and sizes and colors, but I feel like doing what I do as a female rapper, in our industry, so much women have their body done, like they all look good, they get their bum big, then they start selling more, it's like, it's a lot. So sometimes I feel the pressure like, but I'm doing whatever whatever I can in a healthy way. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but the thing, do you know what, that's interesting, yeah, because I feel like, I mean, I don't know what your, your mentions on that look like, but I feel like you get a lot of love for the way that you look and yeah. the way that you present yourself Sometimes and your I'm style. Not. But then it doesn't, I guess it doesn't really matter what anyone else says. It's about how you feel. Yeah. And what I've realised as well is that it doesn't necessarily, the compliments don't like equate to like record sales. So True. I still got to work on my music and I can't fall back on just being a pretty face. Like I'm mm. way more than that or just having a nice body. But yeah, I do feel like that's become more important to me over mm. the time. Like, when I first was coming up, I was always in shape, but I was more boisterous, so I didn't really like show as much skin. I think that like, when I started flying out and enjoying life more, more than just music, actually, I started being more, growing into myself as a woman and being more sexy. Yeah, was there a day? Yeah. Do you remember that, that, that specific, that like, go on, it, talk, I, talk on that. Like, what was that? I think it was like May 2015. So these times like, before that, it's just bare track suits and all of that, and then one day you've gone out now on a bikini yeah, vibe. And, uh, yeah, and I was like, oh, I remember the first time I wore a little vest dress, no bro, I was like, girl, you look good. Loud. Fuck? Like, you look good. Because I was looking good. I was like, wow, mm. like I could do this. But I was like, I was already quite grown, like 21. Right, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, don't rush girls, you get me? Yeah. <laughs> but I remember them times when I was like, I really grew into myself and started that. to become more of a woman. And then start doing it. Now you're out, out here ready to take man to Novakoff and all of that. Let if me tell you something. I love all of that. Let me tell you this now. I, yeah. I ain't had it. I ain't had, <laughs> I ain't had no one take me there. Yeah. Obviously, I've had like being taken to dinner yeah. and whatnot. But see all of that. See what you're t like. If that's what the that's what the package is. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, that, yeah, that's fine. Man take love me it. to like, dinner. You know what? what? And the girls love it as well. A lot of girls be like, girl, I can't take a guy Novikov. But I feel like I can when I listen to it. I'm like, that's Take cool. man Novikov. Do that, innit? Yeah, like, the bill. Because when I, I like going nice spaces and you get me, I got man taking me May 1st. So I might just treat you one time. You asked the question, yeah. 
on your Twitter where you said, could you see yourself dating someone from a club? Let's talk about this. Yes. Yeah, let's do this. Well, why did you ask that question in the first place? First of all, let me just get one like, thing In fact, way. Ask, what was the actual question? My question was, do you, do you think you can get into a serious relationship, relationship with someone that you've met in the club? What made you ask that question? Because... All I see in the club more time, even though we are in the same vicinity, is man just, what's still saying? Showing their yeah. basically. What do you mean? Like what, in the They're print? What, in the print? No, 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 like no. aura? No, aura, vibes, like, okay. Girls, for instance, I go to the dance, yeah? But I'm not going to the dance to move to man and take man's number. Obviously, it's not like that anyway. That's yeah. not how women I feel very about. sexualized right Sorry, now. Sorry, yeah, but, but I, I'm all right with I it. I do not go to the dance trying to find a man. But boys will go to the dance, putting their best strip, doing light shows, buying bottles. Who are you not doing it for? Because it's not just for the man, them. Do you get me? It's not. You're doing it for the girls, or you're doing. It's like it's like a peacock showing his feathers. Look, <laughs> I'm here. Hi, I'm here. You see my chain. You see my drip. You see my Dior. Yeah. You see the bottles. Guy, I got money. Right. Okay. You're gonna come home with Let me. Let me interject though. So no, go okay. on, go on, go on. My whole thing is so when a guy's doing that, and if he now moves me up, yeah, yeah, and something we start having feelings for each other. How am I supposed to be comfortable when I know that he's going to be doing this every... He goes out all the time. He's in a dance every time. They're chatting to bad girls. They're bringing girls to their table. His right. boys are taking girls home. How am I supposed to... Why would I now go and stress myself and get... The same way you get them, the same way you lose them. Right, okay. Let me ask you this then. then. You're in a, oh, babe, I saw your man in a dance, you know. Yeah. So so if, if you're asking that question, <laughs> that, that would um same apply for like Instagram then? How? All right, go on. Give right. Give me an example. Because then, basically what you're saying is, how would you know that when he's out, he's not doing the same thing? So if he slid in your DMs, you speak to him, catch a vibe with him, it ends up being whatever it is, then you end up catching feelings for but, each other. Mm. How do you know that he ain't slid? But, but and you can, remember, not, you can play this game in every lot, dynamic. But not going against anyone, yeah? yeah. I don't really, I'm not going to chat to a man I met off gram. That's just right. not my style. I don't really like online stuff. What if you, what if you just, if say you're day. driving a big whip now, and he pulls up to me at the lights. And he pulls up to you at the lights. I might allow him. Listen, I know that men... But are, he might do that. But I know I know that men are trained to hunt and get mm. what they want. And that's fine. I understand it. But, like, my best relationships in my past have been from just us forming a friendship. Right. And being friends same. first. Whether we're from the same ends or we know each other, whatever. And even if that boy was a dog and he moves to other girls, I know that our foundation is solid. Right. And I may not meet, meet my future guy and we may as he may not be one of my friends I already have or we may not have that friendship moment at first but for me I haven't had good experiences with getting serious with guys that I meet in dances right. it don't it don't work for me like when Ush used to say back in the day you can't find love in the club I thought it was a joke <laughs> you know that song they say you can't find love yeah, yeah, yeah. in it it's like it's a real thing. I no, don't you know. Can I just, still. I'm not saying that men do it all for show for girls, but I do feel like a lot of men that go out is for the gallum. Can I tell you this? We're not Can out I be there honest with, the with you? Motive. Do you know what? The, and this is so f interesting hearing you say this, yeah. Because for me, yeah, when I see this, I think that more time, enough times when man's wearing the drip and doing all this type of stuff or whatever, they're doing it for the man them. And I think that that has been where the issue is to it's me. Not Right, let me let me land though. Okay, the reason why, the reason being, yeah, is that like once upon a time, it seemed as though like when someone was getting ready to go out or whatever, their presentation was one, about themselves, and two, if you were single, to impress a lady, yeah? Now, to me, I don't feel like there's anything wrong with that. But when you get to that stage now where you push all of that to the side and everything now is for the man them, to me, that's just a bit weird. So hold on one second. Not, Wait one second. Yeah. So the like the way that I'm sagging my trousers and the way that I got my aftershave <laughs> and the way that I got my chain on is for for my for another man. It can't be. Where I'm not like, and I'm not wrong with that. Like, there's yeah. nothing wrong with that. So I hope you don't. You know what I mean? Yeah. But like for my guy to turn around and say, "Oh, bro, you look nice." No, I you would. I would like a girl that. to turn around and say, "Yeah, like I like the way that you've put yourself together." That means more to me than demand them. Yeah, do you understand what I'm saying? We're out here just styling for each other. What for? I'm not hugging and kissing the, up with my exactly. brethren. The only thing I could say for them and them sometimes is that I know what they like to compete on is the light shows when they're getting the bottles to the table. See, when certain men see I'm a next man doing it too much, that I hear you. But a lot of guys are. Yeah. When certain men do that, 
they they kind of it's sometimes it can be competitive, but and no one really wants the dusty girl to come and be too first in their table. That's why you see girls <laughs> getting heated when they put their hand and go grab a bottle. Like, babe, yeah, you didn't yeah, come yeah. with us. But a lot of men, if they see a thing they like, they're open and they're ready for it. They don't mind. So it's like. I don't know. I just don't know if I'm... Um, a lot of people are saying, oh, you know, but we're both in the same place. I was thinking, bro, you're not there with the same intentions. I'm there for not anyway. Yeah, um, yeah. Do you know what the thing is? I think that that applies to pretty much any place. But I'm with you more on the sense of the vibe more comes organically or through building a friendship. I'm on that. Yeah. If we just start... Anytime I've been in a, in a relationship more time, I've just fallen into it, to be fair. We've just been chatting and that. Next minute now, she might take my Nova cough and whatnot and then come back <laughs> do for the bot. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm. Then it, we fall into something. Trust do you get me? me? I, my, I think one of my best relationships is someone I was a friend with first. Do you mm. get me? Like, obviously, I could have been young, but I just feel like we had a friendship and then that's why we can maintain a friendship. Like, I don't feel like, yeah. Even when when certain men move to me and they're too smooth with it, I'm like, ooh, yeah, you're yeah. too good at this. Yeah, yeah, you're too it. good, like... I, if we get really serious, I'm going to be thinking... But obviously, at the end of the day... But that's that's all in your own head, though. Yeah, it fair. is, it is. And to be that's fair, not his fault. Because no, he, not, he might not. genuinely... Do you know what the thing is, yeah? See, for him, as a man, I might have the opening line that I say to everyone. I might. Yeah. I might have a smooth... Oh, me and my brethren used to have this thing. We used to go out, like, back in the day or whatnot, yeah? If we used to see a girl or whatnot, I'd say to my brethren, rah, like, you see that girl over there? Yeah, boom. <laughs> then I might say to him five minutes later, boom, I got the opening line then I've gone and then I'll do whatever it is. But you know what? Like in those, because I know I got seven seconds to make her, to do something to make the conversation go, yeah? In that, after that seven seconds has gone and I've got her now, there could be a time now in that conversation where I'm like, rah, my intentions were that I was, this is what I wanted, Yeah. yeah? But now we're catching this vibe and that. Nah, you know what? There's something about you still. Let's, Let's talk more. Let's go out and let's vibe more. Next minute you know you're in a relationship. Do you get what I'm saying? It, it can happen it can happen, but more time it don't happen that way. So I do hear you still. But yeah. I don't know, relationship dynamics are funny. What I wanted to also ask you quickly, yeah, is what do you how do you feel about um like dating speculation on you? Because I feel like people would speculate on your dating thing. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, you look mad, and you I'm like, get- No, I didn't. They're like, yeah, what, you weird thing, and then this man's commenting under that, and then everyone's thinking that. Do you understand what I'm saying? I'm like, what, Miss Max is going like that here, yeah? Rappers and athletes. I don't and, they just want to talk me? to me. I don't know. Mm. <laughs> no, but mm, how do I feel about people speculating? I don't mind. It's just it's t- talking it. It's fine. You're right with I, that. I, listen. <laughs> Not I mate, been going down for a long time. That's all I'm going to say. I don't believe that. I ne- uh, see when I'm a woman, I don't be- let me tell you something. I don't believe that. Every girl, well, has al- like, there's always one listen, man. There's always one no, man. No, hand on my heart. God is my witness. I don't chat to no one. I don't. I'm sorry, oh Miss I'm sorry. Do you I know don't. what? Even if you're not chatting to a man, he's chatting to you. No, let me tell you something, yeah? Do you know, do you know what I mean by that? But yeah, I get you. You see, now because I just went to Dubai in the new year, like, I just went quickly. In. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In that time... <laughs> Like, even in that time, I met a few people, like, I ain't been out in a long time. I forgot, oh, yeah, my mm, things, mm. It's, it's get me. Mm. But even it's funny because when I actually tweeted that question and people were posting it, man, they were messaging me, like, what are you talking about me? I was thinking, bro, I'm definitely not taking any of you lot serious. So wow. don't worry about that because it's not. But, yeah, I'm, I spoke to a few guys, but I'm really not speaking to no one. Honestly, I, I'm going to be honest I'm just focused yeah. on my music. I, and I'm focused on myself. I'm right. going to be so 100 of you for a long time. Hit me. Obviously, like, I was in a very private relationship and right. it's like, I felt like there's certain things that, in a way, I knew I, maybe I was done wrong in this sense and that sense. So right. I was, like, really keen on, like, not F all men, but, like, I'm done and I'm and I'm not with it. Yeah. But I've had time to reflect on myself and I, I honestly am working on me. Like, I don't want to get into something if I'm not ready and it's like, this sounds so crazy, but I heard this woman she was talking about basically if you want a guy and you want to track your partner you should write down everything you want in a man and the funniest thing is I know everything I want in a man do you? yeah but I genuinely just feel like I just I just want to work on me yeah. like I've, sometimes you know like when you get into a situation and you've been hurt you quit to say this guy was this and they were that and they were that but it's good to really look at yourself and get do, me do you understand or do you know what your negotiables are and what your non-negotiables are? yeah right so like you want to know? 
Yeah, you can tell me a couple still. Non-negotiable stuff is like a guy that thinks he can control me right. and tell me what I'm gonna wear and where I'm gonna go and onto me. I'm not. That's that's something I can't negotiate on. Yeah, I'm yeah, not yeah. with it. Um, someone that's gonna try and put me down. I'm not mm. with it. Those stuff, them type of stuff, I can't negotiate. Someone that doesn't want to be in a monogamous relationship, I can't negotiate. That, that. <laughs> yeah, I hear that. Yeah, do you know? <laughs> and I want to wife you and be holding you down, and then yeah, you're yeah. out there drinking Kisha yeah, Becky, yeah, yeah. bro. I don't have time for that. But yeah, that's my non-negotiables anyway. Nah, I but hear like you. other things I can negotiate on, like the, the money he's making, his job, like certain like personality traits, I could work on it. That's good. You learn. I I feel like you learn so much when you when you come out of a relationship that don't work. Yeah. Because then you start understanding your your negotiables and your non negotiables even more. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And you start learning like how you could even have moved better. Because it's all good like talking about ah uh, this happened to me in this relationship. This yeah. is what this person done. Yeah. But at times as well, you can look at yourself and say, you know what? This probably wasn't my proudest moment when mm, I did that. For sure. Or, or like this happened, and why did it make me feel this way? Okay. Maybe I need to figure out and yeah. you understand what I'm saying. So mm-hmm. and the things you let slide as well, like setting healthy ba- healthy boundaries is so important. Mm. And I think I didn't understand that at you being young, like growing up in general. So now I'm like, I'm different. Like I, if I don't want to answer my phone, I don't answer my phone. It's if yours. Wanna, but for a long time, I felt really obliged. No, and I don't no, know it's why. Yours. It's so weird. It's yours. You yeah. do what you want with it. You know. Yeah. Trust me. I, I hate that. People feel like they people feel feeling Constant, as though entitled. they are yeah entitled to your time. Nah. And what kills me as well is because I'm on socials. And a lot of the time when I'm on socials, it's work. I don't really even care for social media like that. It's more so work to me. Like I like looking pretty, taking pictures and that, but I jumped on social media at the start of my career. That's yeah. why I'm here. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? So it's like people might see you post, oh you didn't call me, you didn't shout me back. I'm like, bro, trust me. I'm you know there's a massive it. difference between like posting for one second and having a half an hour conversation on the phone. Like it, it takes, if I want to post something, I will go onto Instagram, boom. I got the picture, bam, bam, boom, caption, boom, post. That's it, it's done. Done. Yeah, but if I answer the phone, we're going to be chatting for however long and I might not want to, I might not want to do that. It's exactly. all right. I'll call you when I'm ready. Do you get me? But anyway, I feel like you've had a bunch of mixtapes and stuff out, yeah? And I do feel like we're ready for the album now. I can't lie to you. I feel like we're ready for I that. I feel... Now. You don't feel like you're putting it out right now? Not right now, no. Why? Are you scared? No, I'm not. I just, I want a specific moment. Okay. So are you more in this, just in a singles vibe, throwing things out there, just kind of Yeah, creating... and I'll probably give another project. Don't be too tired of the mixtape because they start... I'm not. Okay. I'm not, I'm but not. But basically, I just, yeah. I just, I just musically want to learn more things. Yeah. That's all. No, no, no. That's where I'm at. I don't know about where everyone else is, but that's where yeah. I'm at. I want to learn some more things from you, and I know you'll do that on a, on a mixtape anyway. But um, but yeah, if you weren't, I, I'm I'm saying that I feel like you you're definitely getting close to it because I'm, I just feel the unfortunate thing is we are not in a space in, in climate wise to be able to enjoy what Novakov could do in a club right now because I, I know that that would be the thing. I just listen, know it. Li- Snack no, was a nice one. Snack was a lovely one. You see this one here now? <sighs> it's mad. <laughs> I really wish you could have been in the club. That was a club banger. That was my moment. And you know what? I got so good at making them. So I got enough turn up tunes, party tunes. Yeah, you're good gearing. at them. You're good at them now. Nah. I really I feel like, like you them. Got the formula. Yeah. I feel like you got the formula. I could definitely. Yeah, Queen of the Club Bangers. Period. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I could definitely churn them out. I got a few, but. Yeah. Boy, I'm looking forward to seeing what comes next from you, though. Still, and I think that when you are ready to drop that album, yeah, whether you put a, a, a mixtape out or you put an album out or whatever, I want to be able to sit down with you and like dissect it because I know that there's certain things that you'll talk about, certain things yes. that from when you were younger. Do you get what I'm saying? Certain things from even now that you've experienced and that, that I would like really, really like to tuck into. Do you get what I'm saying? So yeah, we'll do that still. But I'm honorable honest. shout out to you though. Seriously, you. I've I've spoken about you a good few times. Um, yeah, you it's got, always love. I you got you it. got more than enough about you. You the style, vibe. You know, you, you're relatable. I just love the clarity. There's just <laughs> this bit. You know what I mean? And then even the live shows and stuff like that. You've got that down to a T. So you know, you don't need me to tell you. You just yeah. don't ever stop that. Do you get what I'm saying? 
Don't ever stop that. You got loads in the tank. JD and the Duffel Bag Podcast. Love for listening, everyone. Um, Miss Banks, she's going to be in a club when it opens up looking for our man still. No. So. <laughs> <laughs>